Adaptability in the public realm, but in particular in buildings, again relates back to this point about monocultural uses, mono uses. Here we can see um, things designed for one purpose being used successfully, it appears, for another purpose. Um, and the same should be true of buildings. Uh, some of the oldest buildings that we, that we know and love um, have been used for many different uses during their lifetimes. Top right, uh, a building built, I think, probably at the end of the 18th century um, as a Christian place of worship, later became a synagogue, now operating as a mosque. But it could be, uh, could be a number of other things as well. It's a robust building that will be around for a long time. On the left, um, you know, quite a successful new development of offices, the ones behind uh, Tate Modern. But it's an interesting question to ask. These have very deep floor plates and they're highly serviced. And if the requirements for office working changed in 20 years and 30 years and people wanted to work in a completely different way and there was no longer a requirement for offices there, what on earth are you going to use that building for? And, you know, there's no re real reason why we shouldn't demand of buildings that they should, be used for, they should be usable for a different purpose if the purpose that they're designed for doesn't work out. Multi-storey car parks are an interesting example. You know, if, if, if we find that we don't need multi-storey car parks anymore, we're still building them, what are we going to do with them? Do we have to knock them down or could we design them in such a way that they could be used for something else?